defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree as charged. Why don't you go to the podium, please? Um, the jury having found you guilty of murder in the first degree, Miss Me, I will adjudicate you guilty and sentence you to life in prison without parole. I'm ordering the 550 standard price and court card. You have 30 days to appeal. Having gone through the prison system, I can always sympathize with somebody who has had a sentence handed down to them. In my case, it was 20 years. Do you know what 20 years feels like to a person that's never been in prison before? It, it really feels like your life is over with. And so when I see these people who have gotten these either life sentences or death sentences handed down to them, just their action, I can feel it. I understand what's going through them. If you ask the average person who was in prison, ask them, did they ever think that they would do what they did that landed them in prison? They'll tell you no. But something happened along the way that got them to that point. A lot of people, when they have these life sentences and death sentences handed out, even those with extremely long sentences, a lot of them try to carry on the little facade that they're okay, that they're tough, they can handle this. You'll even hear someone say, I can do this standing on my head. But... I know better. See, I've been in a place where I've heard the cries of these men, these men with these 100 year sentences and 200 year sentences and life sentences after life, consecutive life sentences. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to know that you will never get a chance to see the other side of the world and your life is over with. They had me shackled going in for sentencing. And I wondered why in the world do you need to have me shackled? I'm not going anywhere, but when you get those extremely long sentences handed down, yeah, there's a reason why they shackle you. Because you know where they're sending you, you don't want to go. And so faced with the reality that your life is over with, what do you do? And there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. There is a finality to being judged by Christ when it's all said and done and there's nothing else that you can do. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 60 says, so we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. The thought of having to go before the judge when you know you're guilty. There's no appeals left. There's nothing that you can do or say. You're just hoping for some mercy, though you know you really shouldn't get any. That is a fearful prospect. The reason why we say a lot of things that we say here on this channel and even other channels, and the reason why we call out clear and obvious sin, ignorance, foolishness, heresy, when we call out the false prophets, the false teachers, uh, the wolves, people get upset and they wonder well, why even do so. There's a reason why. Let me just give it to you straight. Paul says here in verse 11, he says, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. So knowing the terror of the Lord, we're all going to go before him. And the issue is, on what basis are you going to be judged? The terror of the Lord is not a good thing. It's not It's not a five-year sentence or a 10-year sentence or even a 50-year or even a life sentence here on earth. No, this is a life sentence throughout eternity. This is permanent. And it's not that you're just going to be secluded away somewhere. No, there will be this eternal torment on your part for not doing the easy thing. That is placing your faith, your trust in Christ. The Bible says that the day you hear the Lord, harden not your heart. Don't let it be up to you the reason why you don't go to heaven, the reason why you go to hell. Don't let that be you. For the rest of us, when we see foolishness, when we see ignorance and stupidity that's masking around itself as Christianity, we're to call it out because we don't want anyone else to go through in a spiritual sense what I went through and what some of these people are going through in a much greater sense. We don't want that. And so we're going to be firm. We'll be resolute. We'll be strong in, in calling out this stuff that can help lead someone down the wrong path. Oftentimes people get in over their heads 
in sin or involved in different things they didn't mean to might be nice people, but got caught up in something. That's not an excuse. And then imagine yourself at the at the judgment seat and maybe your family could actually see what's happening. Can you imagine the tears, the hurt, the heartache from them? Imagine yourself in this courtroom and your loved one is going away from for life or you're the loved one that's going away and your family has to look in the background and see what's happening to you. Just look at the look on her face. She's bothered. She's hurt, knowing that one, her life is over with. And what does it do to her family? Knowing that there's absolutely nothing that you can do on her behalf. And so if I say it the nice way, if that doesn't cause a person to want to just give up their sin, if I've got to be a little firmer, so be it. If I've got to be rude in saying it, so be it. If I've got to be downright rude to get it through someone's head that where you're heading is the wrong road. Well, some people respond to that. I get it. Not all will. And so if that's the case, then the message of the cross is just simply not for you. If you've made up your mind that you've got to get it a certain way, that someone has to be nice to you the whole time, well, we'll try that way. But in the end, it is up to you for you to place your faith in Christ. And if you get upset that we said it in a not so nice way, and if you get upset that we called out a wolf in a not so nice way, well, then let we'll let you deal with God but as far as us, our conscience is going to be cleared. The love of Christ compels us to share the gospel. And as Paul says, the fear or the terror of the Lord also compels us to share the gospel, to warn people, as Paul has said in numerous places throughout the scriptures. And so if that's you, if you're in a place where people have warned you about your sin, they've warned you about what you might be into, even if you think you're a believer and people are still warning you, I would say take heed. If you know someone who has fallen into some sort of a sin or going down a path, if being nice isn't working, well, then turn the heat up. Because I can promise you when the judge, the great judge, carries out his sentence, pronounces his sentence and hits the gavel, that's it. You don't want to regret not doing everything that you could have done before that moment. Amen.